Hey guys, it's Luke from DLM here, and today we're going to be looking at every single melee weapon introduced in the 1.4 update. Now, before we get started, I want to clear up a few things. I'm not going to go super in-depth into every weapon. It's more of just to showcase my initial thoughts on them, or my thoughts while only using them for probably 10-20 minutes each. Um, I've done item reviews on quite a few of these weapons, so if you do want a more in-depth, I guess, uh, view of the weapons, check out those ones. Um, and in all of these videos, I'm not wearing any video. Uh, I'm not wearing any accessories or any armors that would help melee weapons. So this is really just their raw stats. I'm aware that some of these weapons are in situations where we'd never use them, like I'm using the Grave Digger shovel against hard mode enemies. But this video would have taken three or four times longer to film and edit if I went and found an appropriate situation for every sword or melee weapon. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, but hopefully you still get kind of a just a good enough showcase and a good enough view on how the weapons work uh, from this quick video. Uh, in my opinion, the Grave Digger Shovel is a pretty good weapon to get early game. It does 12 damage, it hits pretty fast, it's auto swing. It can be used as a shovel, which is nice, so it's good for building. Um, it's, it's a pretty stock standard weapon that does decent damage, decent knockback, and will definitely keep you alive for potentially the first few nights in the game. Next we have the Gladius, which does some pretty hectic damage for when you can get it. It's just not got good enough knockback to really keep enemies away from you and stay safe. If you've got a very tanky build, it might be a little bit more useful, but you're going to take some damage if you are using this. Like most short swords, you can't really keep enemies that uh, far away from you, and it's not too strong against ranged enemies because they can just smack you off from further away than you can hit them. We have the Terra Grim, which is kind of the replacement for the Arcalis. It's found in Enchanted Shine Shrines, and this weapon is an absolute killer. If you do manage to find one of these early in your, um, I guess, early in your world, you're going to be using this for a long, long time. I reckon it can even, look at this, it's handling its way with hard mode enemies, which I think is very indicative of how good it is. I'm not even using any melee enhancing accessories, and it's, it's still doing a pretty good job of keeping enemies at bay. Following this, we have the Shroomerang. I don't think the Shroomerang's that good. It's only a little bit better than the Enchanted Boomerang, and it's worse than the Ice Boomerang. I think it might be useful if you have nothing left uh, or nothing else to use, but I think it's just... It's average uh, from a usability perspective. I don't think it's going to carry a run or be a first choice of weapons. Maybe in some very fringe cases, if you don't have any other Boomerangs, uh, is it worth using or any other ranged weapons. Next, we have the Mechanics Wrench, which is a 12.5% drop from the uh, Mechanic, so you can get it straight after you've run into the dungeon. I think it actually does some pretty insane damage for when you can get it, especially as a melee weapon, and there aren't too many of them in the dungeon. Um, it's, it's pretty killer. I mean, if you manage to defeat Skeletron early, just run in, get the Mechanic, kill her, nice weapon. Uh, next, we have the... Hammerax, or the Hemorax, I think it's meant to be like hemorrhage. Um, I think as a weapon, this is average uh, at best. It doesn't have that much knockback, and you're going to take a lot of damage while getting it, uh, while using it. I don't think it's it's one of the better melee weapons. Then we have the Jousting Lance. I think this weapon is kind of garbage, to be honest. Like all the lances, I'll talk about all three of them here, because apart from more damage, they don't really have anything special about them. Uh, they're terrible against range enemies. As soon as you get hit with any attack at all, you kind of recoil it you can't use it and it just means you're going to be taking damage unless you can one hit enemies by dashing into them with like a shield or something it's very weak uh if you do have a shield like i just said it, it's a bit stronger and maybe you can find some fringe utility case to use it but it's just it's not very good um as a weapon to use in pve it just you're gonna take if you take any damage at all while you're using it, it's pretty much game over. Uh, it's a very, very fringe case weapon where you have to be running or moving or sprinting or dashing into an enemy, otherwise you just can't do all that much damage. Maybe running across like the top of your world with it in front of you might work, but it's also just a bit cumbersome to use where you have to re-click it every time you take damage, and it's not always super obvious when you've taken damage instantly. Um, again, I'm going to talk about all three of these in the same, I guess, uh, breath, because there's really nothing too special that differentiates them. Uh, the faster you're moving when you hit an enemy, the more damage you do. But if you get hit, you um, you have to put it away and then resummon it. And there's a, it's not the fastest weapon to resummon, and it doesn't have the most knockback if an enemy is already close to you. So yeah, that's my that's my stance on the lances. They're <laughs> they're not they're not 10 out of 10 weapons. I'll tell you that much.
Next we have the Starlight, which is a hard mode drop from the Empress of Light. I think this weapon looks cool. All the new weapons that they've added look cool, if nothing else, and this is one of the coolest looking at the cool looking weapons. <coughs> oh my god! Um, does a heck ton of damage, it keeps enemies at bay, nothing's really going to be able to hit you while you've got this out in front of you. Uh, it doesn't protect your whole body, like it's a, it's a short sword or short sword-esque weapon, but um, you don't really need to focus an enemy for too long because it's it's going to be killing it <laughs> before long. Uh, it's, it's a very, very good weapon. It's, it's top three weapons in the game uh, from an aesthetic perspective. Zenith, it is ridiculous. Coolest looking weapon in the game and strongest weapon in the game. I think this is a 10 out of 10 weapon and a very fitting end of Terraria. Terraria. Uh, although you don't really have much use for it, you've already finished the game, you get it. <coughs> I think it's super, super, super cool. Um, just look at it. It covers the whole screen, does ridiculous amounts of damage. You can do uh, 5,000 DPS on a mannequin uh, without any accessories or buffs at all. It's a very fitting final sword for Terraria. My only complaint is there isn't a Zenith-esque weapon for every class, but that's not really a bad thing about this weapon. The Storm Spear, and I think this is a very good uh, early game spear. If you do manage to pick it up from a crate or in a chest, uh, you're going to be able to do some mad damage. You've got a little bit of a ranged attack, which isn't incredibly long range, but it can keep enemies at bay and just chip away at them. And if you do manage to get up close and personal with an enemy, you can actually hit them three or four times with, I guess, a single pull, like all spears. Uh, spears, as opposed to lances, I think are good weapons. Um, and this is, a, this is a pretty good spear for when you can get it. Uh, next we have the phase blade, nothing too special, it does the exact same amount of damage as every other phase blade and it's good It's good at what it does, you all should probably already know how this weapon works. The lack of auto swing is annoying but you can upgrade it to the phase save which comes next. The only really cool thing to say about this weapon is if you liked Ray, ah uh, that's a yellow sword, also it wasn't a good movie, my opinion. Um, yeah, it's 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 it is what it is. It's it's um it's an orange face saver. So if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. There's nothing nothing too big and bad about it. And now it's the face saver, which as you know is just the upgraded version of the face blade. Um, I have the exact same opinions about this one. It's a cool orange version of the existing uh, lightsabers or face savers or face blades. Following this, we have the Captain America shield or the Sergeant Sergeant United shield. I think this weapon is both. A cool reference, a cool weapon, and a powerful weapon. Um, it's very nice that it has such a potent tracking ability. It, it doesn't just kind of track to enemies, it really tracks to enemies. Even if they're behind you, it can hit an enemy more than once, and it can hit more than five enemies, I think. It's a very good weapon for when you can get it, in my opinion. Uh, now we have the mace, which is a weapon you'll get very early in your game. I think it's it's good for when you get it, but you can instantly upgrade it to the flaming mace with 99 torches by hand. So you probably will never hold on to this for very long. I think it's, uh, it's a pretty cool flail. Um, the fact that you can kind of spin it around you and throw it now gives it a lot more versatility, which is good. It can kind of be used in defense mode and attack mode with a bit more range. It is a bit slow to um, speed up. I mean, it's a bit it's a bit slow to uh, spin it up for long enough to get a decent enough range. Now onto the flaming mace, which my opinions are, are the exact same, except it is better. Um, you can get it at the exact same time. Minus 99 torches, and it sets people on fire, it lights up the area, and it does more damage. Last weapon we have is the Drippler Crippler, which does ridiculous damage. Uh, it's one of the last flails you get, maybe even the last. 55 damage, and it throws a ball out when you let it off if you've charged it for long enough, which I think is very good. It, as you can see, is doing very, very significant damage on these mannequins with no uh, damage accessories. You're going to have a pretty good time with this. It's uh, better than the Dow of Power, which I believe was the previous best flail in the game. I oh, know the flower one was, but this is better than the flower one. The flower one, um, the flower one that dropped from Plantera. Anyway, that's that's my opinion on bloody most of the weapons in Terraria. I think, actually, let's talk a little, little bit more about this before we go into the outro. Um, I think this one has some really good versatility. You've got a close range kind of spinny attack, uh, which does almost enough knockback to keep you safe from mo most enemies. Or well, it does enough knockback to keep you safe from most enemies. It has a pretty good throw attack that charges up much quicker, and it throws a ball which can hit two enemies, which is does very significant damage. 
All right, so that was a look at every single melee weapon introduced in Terraria 1.4. Uh, I tried to be as fast as I can, and it still took nine minutes. I'm sorry if I didn't talk about the weapons you wanted me to talk about long enough, but this is meant to be a showcase video, so please don't get mad at me in the comments. Uh, I really just want to show off every cool new weapon I could. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and thank you all for watching.